office and ask you to please draw the shear diagram or the moment diagram. They will give you this, but they will ask you specific questions about the shear diagram or the moment diagram. And for you to be able to answer those questions, uh, you must uh, be able to uh, draw a complete shear and moment diagram and understand what it represents. For that reason, I'm going to uh, walk through uh, creating a shear diagram and a moment diagram using a load diagram such as this one. All right, so this is called a load diagram because uh, the beam is given, the supports are given to you. One support is at B, another at E, and then the entire uh, load loading is given to you for the beam. All right, uh, from A to C, we have this 20 kilonewton meter. Uh, I'm sorry, kilonewton per meter. 20 kilonewton per meter. Um, distributed load, rectangular load. There is a uh, concentrated load of 60 kilonewton here at C. And then there is a free moment. This is called, this is a concentrated moment, a free moment at the point D. All right? So the first thing that we do is look for or, or, or solve for uh, the reactions. There, there are two reactions, one at B, and I think the, the point B, and uh, uh, Helen, help me out, um, I switched to this slide. Now, slide 14, if you take a look at, at the point B, was that a pin? I think it's a pin. If you look at your, your handout, at the point B, if it was a pin, there, then there are two, um, two reactions. One at, uh, yeah, OK, Helen, thanks. Um, she says at B was a pin, so there's a vertical force. And the other one, at a pin, there's a horizontal, all right? I'm not showing it because the horizontal is 0 in this case. Because when you look at it, there are no external loads in the horizontal direction. Therefore, even though that horizontal reaction actually uh, acts at the pin, at the point B, but it's 0. That's why I didn't show it, all right? At E, however, it was a roller, so it's only a vertical uh, Fe. So the next thing that you need to do, and I need for you to please practice. Make sure you know how to find these reactions. All right? And um, Fami asked that question earlier, but I don't, I don't want to spend too much time showing you how to find the reactions, but you must uh, convince yourself. You don't need to prove it to me. Prove it to yourself that you can find these reactions and you could do it correctly. In this case, um, um, I'm showing you exactly how it's done. I'm writing uh, the mom moment about the point B, set it equal to 0. I assumed clockwise, as you can see, positive. All right? And then I'm showing all the forces that would cause a moment about the point B. And the unknown is the reaction at E. It came out to be 40 kilonewton. Do me a favor. Don't need to do it right now. but but. Make sure that you, you can do that and show to yourself that, that you could do that on your own, come up with that. And then once you have the reaction at E, uh, assuming that's correct, then sum the force in the y direction, direction and you find the reaction at the other uh, support. All right? Now, once we have those reactions, then we can start drawing the shear diagram. Now, here, for those of you um, yeah, Helen, D is a is a pin. D D is a pin. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. D is this one you're talking about. Uh, D is neither. D is just a point on the beam. Yeah, Helen, thank you. That's an excellent question. Helen is asking, what is the point D? Uh, is that a pin? That's a hinge? It's neither. D is simply a given point on the beam. The way we show, we've shown it is because I wanted to show the exact point of application of that 120 kilonewton meter, that concentrated moment. Matthew is saying, how do you convert a distributed load into a single point load? Um, OK, um, let's take a look at this while we are looking at this slide. Um, look, 
just let's concentrate on this rectangular load. We have 20 kilonewton per meter. All right? It's a rectangular load. Think about it. It's 20 kilonewton per meter. So for every meter, it's 20 kilonewtons. How many meters is it acting on? Four meters all the way from A to C. So, so what's the total? The total load would be equal to the area under that, uh, under that uh, rectangle. So 20 times 4, that's 80. That's total of 80 kilonewtons. And where do we place? So that would be the single load. That would be the magnitude. And where do we place it? We place it right at the centroid of that rectangle. In this case, right in the middle. I hope that helps. If you have other questions, Matthew, uh, send me an email. Okay, um, let's go, let me get rid of this red. All right, guys, I need for you to help me go from a load diagram to a shear diagram. I'm going to give you a couple of, uh, if I can write something here, I'll do it quickly. I want you to remember the relationship between the moment and the shear diagram. Moment is equal to the integral of shear with respect to dx. OK? So in order to get the shear diagram, we have to integrate I'm sorry, in order to get the moment diagram, in order to get the moment diagram, we need to integrate the shear diagram. All right? Now, what about shear? In order to get the shear diagram, we need to integrate the load diagram. All right? Like this. Amgad, Amgad, I see your your uh, question. Let me let me go through this, and then I can I can talk to you about the, that what your question. All right, uh, thank you. Uh, so let's concentrate on the first one. Shear to get the shear from the loading diagram, and remember the load diagram is this thing. I'll call it label a W. All right, that's the load diagram. In order to get the shear diagram, which is down here we need to integrate the load diagram. Now, I want to ask you a couple of questions, everybody. When we integrate something, when we integrate a function, what do we do to it? What happens to it? Think about, for example, x. When, when you have the function y equals x, integrating x, what's the answer? What comes out to be? When you integrate x, the answer is, OK x squared over 2. Mina, mina, is that mina? Uh, min, or min. Min says the answer is x squared over 2. Yeah, William Carpenter says if it's x, it's x squared over 2. Think about it. If it is x squared, what's the, the integration? It's x cubed over 3. Here's the bottom line. Whenever we integrate a function, we increase, we increase its order by 1. So if it's first degree, it becomes second degree. Second degree, integrating it, becomes third degree. So remember that. Now, something else we do when we integrate a function. What is it? About? We calculate something when we integrate a, any function. OK, Ian, Ian just answered it. Ian says uh, we find the area under the function, all right? and. Amanda is saying the same thing, Paul and Jonathan and Donald, all right? Um, so when we integrate a function, two things we do. And this is very, very important, guys. I'm not just teaching you math. What, what, what I'm sharing with you, I'm going to apply to draw shear and moment diagrams. And if you follow this logic, drawing shear and moment diagrams, you will, I hope that you agree with me. It will be very simple. All right, here's what we're going to do. If, remember, when we integrate a function, we're increasing its order by 1, and we're finding the area under the curve. All right, very good. So 
if the load diagram between, let's say, A and this point, I'm, I'm highlighting, it, highlighting it with red, all right? I want everybody to please participate in this. From A to where that reaction is, what degree curve is the load? In other words, this horizontal line. What's the, what's the degree of the horizontal line? Thank you. Thank you. Ian says zero. All right. Very good. Arash is saying uh, zero. Okay. So so here here we go. If if the the W the load is zero degree, the shear would be what degree? One degree higher. So we expect it to be a first degree curve. So the shear between A and B, shear between A and B, we expect it to be a first degree curve. What does a first degree curve look like? Well, the first degree curve looks like uh, a line like this, all right? That's a first degree curve. Now, let me show you. There are two, two ways of doing that, all right? The red one or this would also, this green or whatever that color is, that also, guys, that is also a first degree curve. So would the green be correct or the red? And how do we decide? Well, the red is correct, and the way we decide is because of the slope, all right? It's because of the slope, all right? How do we decide what the slope of this first degree curve should be from A to B? Well, we decide based on the direction of the load, direction of the load. And in this case, the load is downward. So if the load is acting downward, the slope is uh, negative. All right? So that's why the, the red segment is correct. All right. Uh, tell me, what happens as we go from B to C? As we go from B to C, what, what, what is the degree? What, what degree curve does the shear need? Well, it would be a first degree with a negative slope. However, what happens at B is this 100 kilonewton reaction. Please make a note of it. At the point B, guys, there is a uh, reaction of 100 kilonewton, which we saw by, uh, in, in the previous slide. All right? So the shear actually changes 100 units going up. So the net change is supposed to be 100. If we begin at negative 40, where do we end? 60, right there. Does everybody see how, how that's working? The effect of that 100 kilonewton reaction at the point B is that you, need, you, you are going to show, the shear diagram will show an abrupt net change of 100 kilonewton going up. So if you start from negative 40, it ends at plus 60. Now, help me out. Based on what I've just shared with you, uh, what do you think the rest of the moment uh, the shear diagram is going to look like from B to C? From B to C, go to the original load diagram. It's a zero degree curve, so the, the shear needs to be one degree higher, so it's first degree. Positive slope or negative slope? Negative slope. Why? Because the loads are acting down. So let's take a look at the next slide. There you go. Now, how did I end up at, uh, at uh, 20 here? How did I end up at 20? Well, remember I asked you what's the second thing that we do when we integrate something? Well, we find the, uh, the, we find the area under the load, under the graph. All right. So if the value is 60, take a look. At the point B, shear is at, at positive 60. When we integrate the function from B to C, we are really integrating this zero degree curve from B to C. All right. So when you integrate that function, that rectangular load only, we're finding the area under that load. What is the area under that load? To the right, you see it's 2 times minus 20. So the change, the area, is minus 40. So pay attention here. If you start from plus 60 and the change, this area, 
that's affected is negative 